The Chamber of Mines was caught on the back foot yesterday when the Department of Mineral Resources released its own findings on black ownership of the industry. Now, this was despite an agreement both sides would keep their findings under wraps pending a court process to provide clarity on key definitions. Nevertheless, the Chamber has now released its own assessment. Joining me with more detail is Head of Economics, Monique Matthijs. Monique, thank you very much for coming in. So, um, there seems to be quite a disparity between the Chamber's assessment of ownership and the Department's assessment. Why is that? There are certain elements within the mining charter scorecard where we do have areas of disagreement. But as you'll see in our release we have made today, we've set out how the department has scored based on the releases yesterday and how the chamber has scored and in fact based on that you'll see that in half of the areas we're actually in agreement our, our main contention around the way the information is presented is that all of the elements even where we've done well is presented in a negative light so you mentioned the contention around the ownership issue it wasn't around the entire charter we're comfortable with the results of the charter being released but as you indicated because the ownership element of it is subject to a declaratory order or legal process around some of the definitional issues we did have an agreement that that information would not be released so yes we were somewhat disappointed at the fact that those the information pertaining to ownership specifically was released on the ele other elements of the mining charter we believe that there are, are key areas where we are in agreement with the D DMR in terms of the performance uh, for example on employment equity in their statement they indicated that the, the industry has exceeded the target of 40 40 percent we're in agreement there so the, the they aren't, it's not on every single area. We think we're about halfway there. And that's before engaging on the specifics of the issues. We, we do hope once we have had a chance to see and view the final report, we will be able to interrogate. And certainly that will allow us for the remaining half where we, we are different to be able to come closer together. Monique, do any of the Chamber's members not meet the ownership criteria according to your assessment? In terms of the ownership criteria specifically, no. So we have about 72 members in the chamber that represents about 90% of the value of the mining industry overall. We have done a detailed assessment with the key specialists pertaining to ownership in their companies based on in conjunction with their DMR submissions and based on the assessments of what we see from our interpretation of the mining charter, they are in compliance. How, how far apart are you and the department on the ownership because uh, they had 32 percent but not all of the members complying with it you have 38 percent and of course that includes deals that have unwound so using the once empowered always em always empowered principles how far apart are you at this stage on the ownership Stephen, that's such a critical question and if you look at the numbers itself you would look at a 32 and a 38 it's both above 26 percent surely what is the fight about the issue is that the 32 percent that the DMR represents on a weighted basis is a function of the entire industry with a significant amount of smaller companies. So, for example, they indicated that about over 400 mining rights have been assessed in this process. A significant amount of those companies are not chamber members. The numbers we represent are our chamber members, which would be a smaller number, but a larger percentage in value terms. Um, and so that's where some of the distortion may come in. It also comes in the fact of these um, interpretational, definitional clarifications that we need, the reason we're going for the court order. The key area at this stage where we are in disagreement is around the continuing consequences issue as defined in the mining charter or more commonly known as once empowered, always empowered, as well as more recently that's come to the fore is the definition around broad-based and how they interpreted that within the assessment process. Those are the two key areas at this stage. Because it lo looks like the department is saying meaningful participation must include communities, employees and entrepreneurs, so all three. Exactly. And the chamber doesn't see it the same way. Exactly. So when the revised mining charter came into force in 2010, those definitions were tightened up and expanded on. So there are transactions that were concluded prior to that period that would not necessarily have all three components. In addition, the, the definition itself was a guideline, gave a sense of moving more towards broad-based, defining what the broad-based meant in terms of communities and employees. There are companies that have done significant empowerment of communities 
employees and not necessarily employees and vice versa. We know, for example, the Kumba transaction, significantly, uh, significant empowerment of employees. So there are various elements here. We are across the industry, broad-basedness has been well embraced. On our numbers, we show that we believe 63% of those of our of our industry based on chamber members often be entrepreneurs leaving 22 percent to communities and 15 percent to employees so if you look across the industry certainly from our perspective it does appear that broad baseness has been encapsulated so those are one of the issues we're going to have to draw closer to each other on uh, so, so Meek, when, when we're looking at this declaratory order from the courts if it includes the principle of uh, continuing consequences or uh, as we talked about once empowered always in part as well as the broad based elements it would need to look at the broader definitional issues um, and principles around the chart itself with a view of of getting clarity on those issues yes. so the, the numbers then that the DMR released yesterday on ownership and the numbers that you come out with today I mean essentially they're meaningless until we have that dec declaratory order aren't they I wouldn't say they're meaningless and I think no, we, we no, need we to clarify them. We shouldn't be them. focusing on them too much until we actually have those definitions de defined. Absolutely. We need, we need it defined. It's important that, that we have a line in the sand because we're moving into review of Mining Charter 3. So the reason why we are, b from both sides, pushing for clarity, because we don't want to go into the next decade with uncertainty around these issues again. The principle I think we do need to press upon as has the minister in his press conference yesterday indicated. Mining industry hasn't closed. All the processes continue. The DMR will continue um, implementing and exercising regulations and law as they need to. Um, at the same time, we will continue to operate and continue to ensure the transformation occurs in the industry as is our responsibility. No one is stopping that process. Um, all we're saying is that the specific actions that need, need to be taken in relation to ownership shouldn't be done until there's clarity on these issues and these matters. Okay, so such as taking away people's mining licenses at this stage? So around, around the concern of mining rights and the threat that it poses, even from the minister's position, he indicated very clearly that they have started a process which pertains to those companies who have not submitted their mining charter reports as part of this process. Have any of your members not submitted their mining charter reports? As far as we are aware, all of our members have submitted. Again, we have not seen the final report. We have not been able to interrogate uh, that information. Uh, it has not been communicated to us. Uh, I mean, we, we talked about the 2004 charter, the revised codes in 2010, uh, and it seems to be empowerment is a moving target. Um, I mean, are we going to have another set and another round of definitions after this? We certainly need to refine the existing mining charter as it stands. I think there we do, all parties do agree, is that the mining charter had a tremendous amount of good elements in it, but there are challenges, and there are definitional challenges that we need to tighten up, not only around ownership, around some of the other areas as well, which we need to better define um, as we go forward. This is a conversation I'm sure we're going to be having again, but thank you very yes. much for coming through today. Thank you so much. That's Monique Matsan, she's Head of Economics at the Chamber of Mines.